Hi everyone. Hello. Okay. Uh, okay, you hear me? So we are here from uh, Amdocs uh, branch here in uh, in, in Nazareth, and uh, I'm very proud uh, to. Yes. Hello, everyone. We're very happy to have these characters behind you. So we are we so appreciate that Amdocs from Nazareth branch host us. This is a beautiful yes. branch of Amdocs. Yes. And as the hosting center that is yes. we are so fortunate that also hosted us. We yes. wanted to give you ah. some gifts. Wow. So Ooh. this is the book of our partner. Oh, that okay. Is Stanford. okay. Thanks and some notebooks for you all. Okay, Thank okay. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> demonstration. Okay, nice. Very nice. Wow, wow. And this is a great opportunity to tell you all, all the audience, that we are going to have a notebook from this conference. This time we're going to put all the illustrations that was provided during one. this conference and make a notebook out of it. So if okay. you'd like. Uh, to ask for yours, just call us. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. and oh, yeah. now. Anna, we got a lot of presents. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. That's going to happen next one. Okay. Yeah, 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 this one. <laughs> no, you will. Come on. No presents for late, guys. <laughs> so, everyone, please welcome the Scale Heroes panel. Mm. This is going to be a panel of scaling experts for collab collaborating the challenges, the struggles, and the gains in the transition to Agile at scale. So let me introduce our panelists. First, Hi. Ronnie Maimon from Amda. Hi. And Meital Gilatal from Western Digital. <laughs> And Vadim Reznikov from Spiral Solutions and Idan Sharmon, head of product and R&D manager, which would be very Hi. Hi, guys. How you both together lead this transition. And last but very not least, our own expert, a certified safe program consultant and trainer, Ilan Sherman from IGMAN. Hello, hello. So it's really so good to have you all here. And all in the uh, all participants can also uh, write from now in the chat question that you would like to ask this great panel. But we will start because we have our own question as well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's start with the end in mind as we all, uh, all the time love to. What did you gain from Scaling Agile? Yes, yes okay. So we start with me. Just, just the guys you wanted, you wanted to be on your computers for, for this panel. So everyone who wanted to be on their own computer, so you can talk about the, so you can do it now. So yes, I will, I will uh, start. Okay, so uh, I will start with the, uh, your first question, okay, so uh, what we get. So as you know, we uh, introduced myself. This is my name is Ronnie, my mom I'm from Amdocs, already uh, 15 years in the, in, the, in the company, last five years in, as a Scrum Master. And uh, we, we, did, uh, we did in the, let's say, let's say in the five, uh, last five years, Amdocs did a, a very big uh, uh, revolution. Okay, big evolution uh, on uh, making the taking the latest uh, tools and technologies and uh, making uh, want to make the customer to be to make everything as amazing. This is our last uh, like slogan of make it amazing, and we want to do it in every aspect, also in the life cycle of the development, and also waking up, embarrassing our people to be uh, always be in the leading. With the best knowledge and the skills, and uh, and this in order to to align with the dynamic changes that we are living every day in this uh, world, uh, in the telecommunication industry, also in the high tech in, in general, 
And uh, this step of scaling up was very, very uh, natural for us because uh, in order to make this uh, happen, we must have this uh, scaling up, moving from the traditional to the water flow, from the water flow to the, to the agile. And the agile give us actually the ability to move fast. Move fast is the, the ability to to make to maximize the the ability of our our uh, developers to make them uh, give a great value to the customer and uh, and to make it amazing. So scaling up for us is a very basic one. Okay, so this is uh, from our end. Okay. Nemo, we can't hear you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, yeah, sure. Meital, would you like to comment on the question? I see you. Just unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah. Um, so yes, uh, for us, uh, we already uh, worked in uh, Agile before. Uh, so, but we had several problems. Uh, the first one, one was the, the fact that we uh, felt that we can't commit on deliverables. Usually they were not in time, sometimes not in quality. Uh, also, we felt that the integration of features took too long and uh, it was one of the major problems. And also we felt that the development team uh, didn't see the full picture. They didn't understand the program, they didn't see the full picture and they just uh, developed things uh, according to requirements but without understanding what, what is really needed and, and why. Um, so we had several goals for, for this. Uh, the first one was uh, uh, the fact that we wanted to deliver on time, of course, with quality efficiency and also involve the teams. Um, so for us, I think the, the main uh, achievement was the fact that we uh, gained alignment between development teams and the product. Uh, we could, uh, uh, we um, could prioritize the, the teams were part of the prioritization and all the process, we could commit on a set of requirements um, and also uh, coping with the lo longer planning horizon. Uh, we could commit for several releases ahead, more than one or two sprint and usually for, uh, for a quarter. And uh, I think this so is the main, the main game. <laughs> So uh, this is a, a great insight because Shelly Barr just asked in the chat, how do you tackle overcommitment? So uh, any idea how to deal with that? Um, so I think that when the teams uh, got the opportunity to react and to be part of the, uh, uh, the commitment process, the prioritization, uh, also the uh, to estimate the, the effort for each task, we could, uh, uh, we, sometimes they had a say, they could say they, they can commit. They could be part of the effort estimation and uh, they uh, gave, a, gave a challenge to the PO. Mm -hmm. So, Ilan, I'm sure that in many implementations you're at, this is a question as well. So, uh, any tips? for this great audience. Yeah, well, you know, uh, coming from the point of view of, uh, you know, when, when a person comes out from outside of the team to help with such uh, uh, processes, uh, you know, overcommitment is, uh, no matter how you look at it, eventually it's, it is kind of a marketing issue. It's kind of a marketing uh, things to handle. Uh, overcommitment is uh, everywhere. I mean, uh, in order to sell, you sometimes have to overcommit. And uh, on the other side, you have the, the team's velocity, which is kind of a given. I mean, and, and, if, and if this does not match, then the teams will continue to deliver whatever they can uh, according to, uh, to, to a reliable planning, hopefully. And the overcommitment will have to be managed uh, uh, by marketing and sales. This is, uh, this is a different kind of uh, crisis that has to be handled by different part of the organization. Thanks. So uh, Vadim and Idan, first, great to see you both together. I think this is something to recognize uh, for sure. The product and R&D are leading this change together. And let's start from the end. What did you gain? What did you gain from scaling? I think I will echo what uh, Meital said. I think that we 
with the uh, uh, safe process, we gained uh, a, a better alignment across uh, teams as our company grew from, uh, <clears throat> from just uh, several small teams to a large organization with many, many teams, which all work together. We found that a strong alignment, a good alignment is something that uh, drives our business much, much better. So SAFE helped us uh, to uh, gain this uh, alignment. I think that the process also allows us to, uh, to get a better visibility on, our, on the whole process of the, of the product development. Uh, and we also see uh, how our teams work together. And we, we can uh, identify the dependencies between the teams as we visually see the, the entire process. And uh, I think that we also gained a, a better predictability, which uh, I think correlates with the uh, over commitments, uh, the question that what uh, was asked in, in public now. Uh, uh, we, uh, what we aim for is the uh, predictability rather than a commitment. We, uh, we try to ask our teams uh, to try uh, uh, to be more predictable based uh, on empiric uh, metrics like velocity and not something that uh, we are trying to guess. Or, and uh, that's how we uh, try to tackle over commitment. And I think that this, this problem, uh, any, any teams that, that uh, went through uh, agile transformation got uh, the over commitment problem in it. And so you uh, get better predictability with the crocodile or with the No, I, I, no I, I, I would say that we, we are not, we're currently in the chopstick phase and hopefully we will be on train phase soon. Awesome. Okay. Uh, by the way, another question that's popped up uh, from Shirley. Um, are QA part of the teams? Of course, yes. Great question. Of course, yes. This is from Spiral. What about you, Ronnie? Uh, unmute, unmute. Ronnie, please unmute. Yeah, yeah, the same. Of course. We... They are part of the QA is part of our scrum, no, no doubt. We must get them together. Metal, would you like to comment? Because uh, for some reason in the chat, they ask directly you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, for us, uh, uh, there is no uh, QA team. Can you hear me? Sorry. Yes. Yeah. For us, we don't have a QA team. <laughs> So uh, we do, uh, development team are doing the unit tests usually, and then uh, we use uh, execution team uh, to do um, regression tests and other uh, uh, functional tests. Uh, at the beginning of the process, we uh, combine the execution teams with the development teams in the same uh, Scrum teams. And uh, it was uh, part of the decision to move to Scrum and to have multidisciplinary teams. Um, later, we decided that uh, we will not do it anymore because uh, they had a lot of other work that they needed to do and they couldn't uh, sit in the dailies and all the meetings. It was overhead. So we, we decided to, to take them out of the scrum teams. It was not very efficient. So I think for the, the um, three, four uh, initial PIs, there were part of the scrum teams and then we decided to change it yeah the, so happy first happy to hear that from all of you uh, i think this is a great question in overall so maybe Elon, if you'd like to put some light on it methodology wise yeah, why yeah. qa should be in the team yeah, for me this is uh, almost a known a known question i mean uh, the team should include anyone that in, is necessary in each uh, organization's context Okay, this is specific to any organization. The team should include anyone that is uh, that, it, that contributes to the value creation. I mean, from the point you have a, a requirement to the point you have a, what we call a potentially shippable product, no matter if it's released right at the end of the sprint or I don't know how much time uh, later, uh, everyone that, that contributes to this effort needs to be there in order to you know, work together as a team and be able to, uh, to create something that is, that is, that is done. That is, a working software. So, so to me, this is not, uh, not a question. Everyone that is required and if QA is required, uh, and by the way, there are, there are organizations in which you don't have uh, a, a role of QA people, but the developers in the team do it. But this responsibility must exist within the team, whether it is uh, a tester or developers that are doing the testing. 
I love that you call it responsibility and not a role. Because this is what it is, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so I, also, I, I, also think that, uh, I also think that automation QA can be a very helpful uh, way to, to uh, make the Scrum more efficient and to be more uh, accurate. And uh, our, in Amdox, we are uh, now have a lot of uh, uh, different uh, uh, activities to make this automation part of, uh, of our Scrums. You can see a very good uh, uh, numbers uh, for, for, for the quality. We are making uh, good results with quality. So I'm curious. Uh, I would like to relate to what Jose said in uh, his previous talk. Did you nail your processes before scaling it? What do you mean by nail your processes? Meaning before scaling up, did you nail your agile processes in, within the teams first? It's, it's a good question. We, uh, I can't. It's, it's not always, uh, you know, 100%. It was, uh, as I mentioned, we, we'll talk about maybe later on about the, our challenges, but I think that uh, one of the challenges, I think here always is the to growing. To growing and also to make it uh, work together, to grow and to, more, to work together. And uh, I think, uh, yes, this is, uh, we did it 50-50. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyone else who would like to comment on that? Yeah, I think that uh, the journey we had in Spiral was a bit different. We started bottom up. Um, mm -hmm. Each team started with the agile processes within the team and not specifically around um, communication between the teams. And once we've identified that uh, one of the main gaps is around communication between the teams, um, we, we started uh, chasing safe and, and the ability to scale. And as we did, we also grew. So it, it worked really well for us. And um, I think that we started with a PI planning and all the uh, scale methodologies that uh, uh, Limor uh, obviously consulted us to, to start. And as we, we uh, started, we, we learned and we changed our processes as we grow. And uh, even now I can't say we have a nailed process that we're, we know that's the right one. Each, uh, it, each iteration we learn, we retrospect and we adopt, and then we, we start all over again. And, um, You're a pure agilist. You inspect and adapt all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Our processes evolve uh, with us. So it's just a natural yeah. way. Uh, and I must say, uh, because I had the privilege also to work with you both, um, that in Spiral, it was really bottom up this way. And the moving to scale is something that you uh, that your team members brought. So this is a very good point. Maybe you'd like to share. Yeah, um, I mean, we started with the dev teams. They were the ones that in, I mean started the agile journey. Um, it moved all the way up to Scrum of Scrums, and then later on to the product teams. And actually, now we're actually training the business teams to think in an agile way in order to um, also help us deliver more value to the business. So indeed, the, the, the journey started with someone, uh, one of our architects saying, maybe we should start, start doing PI meetings that can help us map dependencies between the different dev teams. Um, but it, it goes all the way up to the business teams that eventually needs to make the decisions on, on what we're planning to do on each iteration. I think that this comment came in in time, on time, Aidan, because uh, Omer uh, Shiva ask, just asks if you have any not software development teams. Uh, Every, if we have what, sorry? Not software development team, which work agile, and I think you have good examples for that. Um, well, we have like six dev teams, software development teams. We have three or four um, infrastructure teams, meaning IT teams, support teams. Um, IT teams, um, we had an experience where we tried to work with an AI team, but that didn't work that well. But that's the teams we have now. And again, we started with three dev teams, um, only software working in agile, and we grew all the way to 10 teams. All in all, that's planned for, for a quarter ahead of time. Yeah, thank you. Mitel, would you like to shed some light on the challenges you had 
and share with us some of your practices, how you overcome those. Overcome or, or, or not? <laughs> or not, <laughs> or what did you learn from it? <laughs> So, Maybe you can uh, ask the audience how they can help. <laughs> uh, so uh, when we decided to go uh, to scale up, we decided to we needed to change some organizational changes because um, uh, each uh, skill, uh, um, uh, each skill were in different teams in different sites. Uh, of Western Digital, and when they, we decided uh, to scale up, we decided also, as I said before, to to move to multidisciplinary uh, um, scrum teams, um, and uh, we need uh, one or two for each skills in each scrum team, but we also wanted them to be in the same location in order to work together. And we couldn't achieve that at first because uh, each uh, skills, uh, we needed we uh, we had uh, uh, the need to change skills to 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 train people to do things that they didn't do before in order to to do located scrum team with different skills. Um, it was very challenges challenging. First, we thought it will improve improve the feature integration, the speed and quality, and then we uh, after three four uh, uh, PIs we decided to. To go back again, to go to uh, uh, specific teams with specific skills, and just combine the, the, the testing and everything inside, but don't merge the uh, uh, the teams, uh, because we felt that uh, we didn't have much integration between skills. We thought at first that it will help to solve some integration issues, and then when we started to work this way, we did, we. We learned to we learned that we don't have many integration uh, challenges here, and uh, the different locations and everything was very challenging. So we um, we changed again the organizational structure and go back to to teams um, that were skill oriented. And I think the other major challenge was the fact that the, the PO positions uh, were. Um, also the manager's positions. We wanted the scrum team to manage, manage independently uh, without the, the field that they uh, uh, get uh, instructions from the PO, but we had to put manager in PO positions. Um, so the way that we uh, managed to do it is we try to separate, separate the manager um, role from the PO role and also uh, put a very strong scrum master that uh, will not be afraid to represent the team positions and uh, uh, work, uh, challenge what the PO said. Well, the, the first one for sure, the if it's a feature team, skill oriented team, I think that this is something that everyone in this panel can also relate to. I know for Two for sure, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that in participant we would like to hear you as well. Uh, tell us in the chat how are your team builds? Are they feature teams? Are you in uh, skills oriented teams, component teams? How is it like? Put some insight in the chat. We are curious to hear you. In the meantime. I can I can uh, uh, you know point to uh, challenges that I see uh, from 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 my experience. One of them is uh, actually it's not uh, it's not uh, exclusively for uh, agile at scale, but it's more it's more powerful phenomena there because we're talking about enterprises. Is is the kind is the ability to shift the management uh, mindset from this uh, you know silo way of thinking, you know us and them, and sometimes it's even uh, us versus them to kind of a one value stream uh, approach. This is a challenge, uh, uh, one challenge that, that I see. Uh, another challenge is being able to uh, succeed in, uh, in and, and this is very typical to, to agile scale, succeeding in making the, the, the sprint reviews. So when the context is several teams working together on the same uh, system, being able to achieve a situation in which the system review, the, system, the, the, the iteration reviews are not just uh, team specific or team separate, but 
showing the, what Safe calls a system demo, showing uh, a, a working software of integrated system. And in this way show that it's not only the teams that are iterating and progressing uh, uh, on their own, but uh, show an integrated system, a whole system which is iterating and uh, achieve those milestones apparently is not that easy. Uh, teams are struggling with this uh, quite a lot. Usually what they do is they, 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 uh, they settle for uh, one or two system demos. Sometimes it is just one system demo towards the end of the increment, which then brings out all the problems just at the right, uh, at the last minute. You find yourself fixing problems that you created three months ago, which is very wasteful. Uh, so uh, being able to achieve that is, is very challenging. SAFE recommends until you have the right infrastructure and, and the right automation, uh, uh, SAFE uh, recommends having in each and every program, ART, Agile Release Train, Value Stream, have a system team, which, uh, which, is, a, which is another Scrum team, another Agile team, which focuses on this, on the, on the look on the system and helps the team each and every sprint be able to, to, to present an integrated sim system working. Uh, yeah, and this is a really important uh, point because we we see in many organizations that they wear the scale suit, but eventually every each team is uh, separated and work agile in the team, but as a whole, it is still uh, smells like waterfall because integrations are all only at the end and system exactly. tests only at the end and there are no system increments on the way. Okay, I'd love to hear more challenges and how you yes. cope with. Yes, I want to uh, to share to share my challenges. I told you yesterday that it's going to be uh, maybe different a little, but you know, in the last two years we had the pandemic uh, with us. Uh, we went through a lot of challenges. Okay, I'm, ah, I'm married. It. This is I'm, not married. A I'm married with uh, four <laughs> children, and this is a very uh, challenging one. Uh, to be and working like this in a juggling way, uh, but um, one of the of the challenges that I I felt that uh, here in Andox, Andox we we have is uh, as I mentioned before we had a revolution in Andox and uh, we grow a lot of talents. We have now uh, our Scrum having a lot of talents that are um, giving the the Scrum may be, let's say, a great boost to make, uh, to, 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 as I mentioned before, to, to, have, to move fast and to, to, to have a good quality work and to have some, uh, to, to, to make it amazing for our, uh, for our customer to, to, to give the value. But it's, it was, as I mentioned, the, the talent people, are need to have a, a little different way of managing uh, in the Scrum. Okay, so uh, so, so we, we, are, we understand that uh, the motivation that the talent people have and the power that they want uh, to give us and to, to, uh, to, 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 make, uh, to make it move uh, faster is uh, very uh, depend on the also sensitive, sensitive emotions. Okay, and we found out that we need uh, to, to align the sensitive emotion of our uh, uh, talent with the way of working and the way of our planning. Okay, and the pandemic make it even bigger. Okay, because people are working from home, people are having a difficult other, and we want the talent to uh, take us up. And if we will not uh, bring them the value they want, the motivation they need, the feeling they need, we will actually uh, find our, ourselves without talents. But how can? Uh, but for here we are talking about, uh, I think, uh, uh, success stories. Okay, so I want to uh, bring uh, for one. It, uh, <laughs> no, I want to uh, introduce uh, my uh, one of our talents. Come, come, don't. Uh, oh, one of our talents, uh, Rami. <laughs> Okay, this is the Hi, uh, wow, our talent in Amdo in Optima. Uh, he's uh, working as expert in the UI. Uh, maybe Rami, you can, uh, from your feeling, give some uh, background about this. Uh, what I just say. Yeah, from my experience, I just uh, have to say a few words. Just don't kill creativity. And when someone has some idea, uh, let him fail. Because on my daily job, I failing a lot. 
And it's not actually giving me some bad experience from it. It's actually giving me a good experience. I'm learning from it a lot. And it's bring me today at a point where I don't feel like just a regular employee at Dumb Dogs. Uh, it's not a, that I coming and working from nine to five or nine to six. Every day, every line of code that I'm writing, I'm looking to bring a value to Amdocs. And uh, it's because the environment that they gave me, every manager from Ronnie to our general manager and any other managers that give me the support, it's actually makes me this, this feeling that I want to bring value to Amdocs. And don't kill the creativity. What I mean, it's like when you talk with the people that have some idea and uh, don't kill it. Give them, give them, make some people concept and fail because they will learn a lot from it and they will time after time find a way how to success with this uh, ideas. And I'm waiting, bring some idea that, uh, you know, I can yeah, we, we did some, have a we signature. Did, no, I, we did some, we have hackathon winning, we have some ideas that is coming also and we're having great ideas. I think yeah. we are uh, doing great. So, uh, I think that they are very, yes great valid yes. points you just mentioned and thank you rami you just disappeared in the background magic yeah exactly are making it amazing in random I amazing. <laughs> so uh yeah like uh, and i will also uh, say, repeat like jose said focus on the people first. So I think this is an important thing that you also just mentioned. When we are scaling, we a lot of time forget about it because we are so focusing on the process of scaling up and focusing on the process instead of focusing on the people and how to manage the system for to be able for the people to grow and to be more creative, like you said, is very important. So how can we keep creativity? in a scaling environment. Can anyone else uh, comment on that? No, we Rami, don't. <laughs> Rami just figured it out very well. Just, just let people try and fail or succeed. Both of them bring value, a lot of value. Yes, so, so it's about, you know, the, the familiar uh, stuff like, you know, the hackathons that you do, uh, two times a year or innovation dojos that you do once a quarter. But so, so this, is, this is good. But in addition to this, just like as Vadim said, it has to be part of the day-to-day -day of, uh, of each team member. Meaning you, you, see, you see a problem, you see a challenge, you think of uh, some technology you saw that looks interesting and may help, try it, okay? If it works, then, then, then we may found the, the, the next big thing. If not, then we'll keep looking, okay? So... Uh, it just has to has to be an environment where, where uh, every opinion matters, and you, you you must create this environment where everyone has a voice to uh, to express uh, his idea. And there are no dumb dumb ideas. Some ideas will be good, some ideas will be bad, but you will definitely learn from any of them. I will repeat my brilliant uh, partner here that there are no dumb ideas, as you said, because for to be able to make uh, creativity happen, you must have dumb ideas. <laughs> okay, you start to begin with something. So you even should encourage idiot ideas. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, this is exactly, yeah. We, we... I'm saying this is exactly what we were making. The culture in the of our uh, of our company is making this. If you build it in the DNA of the of the of the company that you are making the the uh, giving the, the the developer the ability to fail and to come over, this is the success story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So looking back at your scale, oh sorry. Go ahead, That's one thing, part of our uh, scaling process were the, the fact that we decided to invest one sprint, the last sprint of each PI uh, in uh, innovation, also planning, but also innovation. It was a decision. We didn't plan any activities for this sprint. It was, of course, the, the, all the, the things that were, were delayed for other sprints, uh, 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 the leftovers uh, are uh, was in the sprint, but also uh, the main uh, purpose of the last sprint of HPI were to plan ahead and also to give uh, uh, to have ideas, to give more ideas, to think about innovation. 
Come on, but how can it go with the business? You need to deliver. How do you have time for this? Yeah, so not everyone has time because <laughs> all, we always have leftovers, but uh, the fact that uh, it's the mindset gives the time also to think, uh, to see the big picture and think about innovation. Really important. So looking at your scale journey, what would you recommend to yourself? If you, are, if you could go back, what would you recommend? To the not scale child that you were. <laughs> I would start with uh, breathing. First of all, breathe. I mean, <laughs> That's important. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long journey. Um, an agile mindset is something that takes time to set up uh, across different teams. Um, in our case, it took us a while until, of, of again, iteration after iteration, retrospecting, adopting, changing, and, and, and performing again until we, we found a way that suits us. There is no one suit for all. And um, even if you go and you read and you see lectures and you have a great consultant, you have to, to understand that you have to fail and you need to reinvent yourself all the time. Uh, for us, we had great uh, quarters of delivery and planning and immediately afterwards, just crappy PIs that we just didn't uh, imagine that can happen. And you just need to breathe, understand it's part of the process and start over again. And uh, eventually we are now in a place where we're happy we're not as happy as we can be. And we know that we always have a, uh, a bit more we can do better. But um, all in all, it's, it's just a, a matter of understanding that it's a process. It's not a one-off. So, so connected you. to this, I would say uh, start small. Okay, start with, uh, with a, a, a small uh, content and, and learn from it uh, and, and, and grow according to your findings and feedbacks. Uh, and at least from my experience, maybe not popular opinion, I would, until you find your way to, to, to building your own model, I would recommend start by the book. I mean, don't, uh, to begin with, don't waste energy on thinking how will it suit me because you don't know. You cannot know in advance. Start by the book. Uh, after all, those uh, frameworks are based on uh, experience of dozens of organizations uh, and their feedback. So it does it does worth, worth something. Start with this, start small and experiment for one, two uh, uh, increments and then see what fits you best and you can always change. But at least for the starting point, start by the book. Yeah, I also agree with uh, Ilan. I think uh, you say that as uh, we just talk here uh, together, uh, start with the, from the book and later on uh, see and, uh, and adjust accordingly. Uh, don't uh, to, to go out from the comfort zone, try uh, new things, not to be afraid. And I think uh, people that are happy, developer, if you have people that are happy, they will for sure develop and uh, deliver a very good uh, um, product to the customer. And this is what we are trying to, to, to create here in this atmosphere. You need to, you to start oh, learning you from, you from you the point. The atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> I think you feel it, right? Another point I can think of is, uh, you know, work as hard as you can to make the leaders at all levels of management uh, actively involved in the process, meaning really actively involved. This will, uh, you know, this will, uh, uh, this will show the teams that, that what they, do, what they do is important. So this is, to me, something that you have to work on. It's not easy to do, but uh, this is something worth working on. And as soon as possible, identifying you know, the, your change agents in the organization, those people that you can identify that really uh, co connect to the, to the methodology, connect to the framework, find, it really, uh, find that it really makes sense to them, use them and put them in on, uh, you know, on critical uh, positions in the organization to help you with, uh, with uh, uh, this spreading, spreading the news uh, uh, in, in, in the entire organization eventually. Mital, what would you recommend yourself? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I actually have nothing to to add. <laughs> exactly <both things. laughs> okay, so that's great. Um, if any have more questions to ask this forum, we can continue in the breakout room. This is a, an important uh, topic that uh, we met many, uh, many companies that deal with and struggling many times uh, to see how to build the organization, what to do first, if to do it evolving or as a revolution and many more questions. So feel free to join our breakout room for more questions. Uh, if there is any last one now, we can have it for sure for now. And after uh, we were going to the breakout room and for our last break, we will meet again for the end keynote at four o'clock exactly with Achi Gvirtam for talking on innovation. So whoever would like, please join us in the breakout room and all of you rest, bring yourself coffee, stretch yourself. And thank you so much, Meital, Vadim, Idan, Roni, Ilan, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.